I'd like to welcome everybody to the April 10th meeting of the Newburn Board of Aldermen. At this time, the prayer tonight will be given by Alderman Kinsey. I'd like to have uh, Pastor Johnson to come forward to give the prayer, please. Well, I'll do the prayer myself. Mm -hmm. I want to thank God for all of us being here tonight. I want to thank you that we have a great meeting tonight and that this city is blessed. And amen. amen. Would you join the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Dingle, here. Alderman Harris, here. Alderman Astor, here. Mayor Outlaw, here. Alderman Kinsey, here. Alderman Best, here. Alderman Odom, here. Okay. Mayor. Yeah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, i like to make a motion that we uh, I make an amendment to the agenda tonight to remove item number 16 from the agenda, please. I second that motion. Motion by Alderman Best, seconded by Alderman Kenzie. Is there discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Okay, at this time, before we get going, I would like to welcome the Boys and Girls Club here. And um, is there a spokesman that would like to um, tell us what's going on there? And what's Yes, good evening. My name is Jane Shermer, and I'm the New Bern Boys and Girls Club Unit Director. And this is Boys and Girls Club of America Week. And Boys and Girls Club has been part of community since 1855. And we're very proud of the New Bern Clubs. We actually have two locations, the Teen Center on Queen Street, and then we also serve children from Tritt Park, Oak Roads, and uh, J.T. Barber at J.T. Barber Elementary School. So we're really, really proud. We're two years young. We can't compete with 1855, but we're very glad and, and happy to have a proclamation tonight to honor the Boys and Girls Club's work across this country since 1855. Thank you. Well, welcome to the meeting tonight. And did they want to do that now, or no, you want us to? And what would you like for us to do? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, okay, and uh, we're going to do that in just a court. minute, and we can, uh, we'll, we'll do the consent agenda, and as soon as we do, maybe they can come up and stand behind us and uh, do it up here if they'd like. Um, let's see, so at this time, we're going to go to requests of peti and petitions of citizens, and tonight, Mr. Mitch Lewis. Mitch, would you like to come up? My name, is, my name is Mitch Lewis, uh, 1916 Fairways West Drive uh, in New Bern. So good evening, Mr. Mayor, Board of Aldermen. I came here this evening to invite you and the citizens of New Bern to an event that Faith Connection of New Bern is going to be sponsoring on May 12th. It's a workshop where volunteers will be making shoes for barefoot children in Africa. I'd like to give you a background on how this whole project came about. Uh, a few years ago, I discovered the staggering statistic that there are 300 million children around the world who are going barefoot. And they're not barefoot because of some cultural tradition, it's just poverty. They simply can't afford shoes. And the, many of these children are going to die as a direct result of diseases that they have contracted by being barefoot. So it's, to address this crisis, our foundation Arts to End Genocide, or ATAG, which works globally but is based right here in New Bern, began a program which is called Healing Our World. And healing is spelled H-E-E-L, like the heel of a shoe, because in rural villages throughout Africa, we are teaching mothers and caregivers how to make shoes for their barefoot children. And beyond that, some of them are using their new skills to form cottage industries, giving them a pathway out of poverty. We have brought this project to Mozambique, Sierra Leone, Uganda, Mali, and now, just now we're beginning work in the Congo. 
And the other part of the program is what we're doing on May 12th. We hold workshops around North Carolina where volunteers make shoes and we give them to children in African orphanages who have no mothers to make shoes for them. And with the help of groups like Faith Connection and the faith-based community and service organizations and with the help of students, and in a few weeks we're having a workshop at New Bern High School, uh, and together we're improving the health and saving the lives of many of these precious children. So this is what the shoe looks like. It's called Clem, and it's all made by hand, and it's using, in Africa they use locally sourced materials, so the soles of the shoes are made of old tires, and the upper parts of the shoes use burlap sacks or old jeans. So let me tell you a little bit about the workshop. We're going to see a short video about the plight of these children. Then we'll hear from our guest speaker, who is Rock Rockashire, and he is our team leader in Uganda. And then we'll make the Clem shoes. And the shoes are going to be made on an assembly line. There are 12 workstations, so volunteers can do tasks like drawing the patterns, cutting the fabric, gluing, hand sewing, and machine sewing. So this is an opportunity to spend a few hours doing something very enjoyable and also very meaningful, and also a way of fulfilling our role as global citizens. So the workshop is free, thanks to the generosity of many New Bern churches who support this event. Again, the date is Saturday, May 12th, from noon to 2.30. It will be held at the First Presbyterian Church's J. Murphy Smith Center, 508 Middle Street, across from the Jewish Temple. Again, the event is free, but we would ask anyone interested in coming to pre-register so that we have an idea in advance of how many folks to expect and also the amount of materials that we're going to need. To register, please call our event chairperson, Carol Doty, at 252-354-8883. Again, that's 252-354-8883. And I think what's really neat about this project is that people throughout Africa, they all know about New Bern. They all know that they're getting shoes from New Bern, North Carolina. So we have a global visibility, which I think is really nice. So again, I invite you, please come down and join us, make some shoes, and save some lives. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Thank Mitch. Thank you, Mitch. Just a question. Mitch, do you have a fly or anything on that that you could send to us that they could distribute maybe to the aldermen we could send out to our constituencies? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so if you would be so kind as to send it to the clerk and then she could send it out to all of us, we could maybe help promote it for you. That would be fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is Geneva Horn. Ms. Horn. Good evening, everyone. Hello. I know the new board have not met me. My name is Geneva Horn, and I'm the president for the Pleasant Hill Community Association. I did not come to do any problem or trouble. I just asked for a status checkup, okay? Last year, we asked you to help us with the speed limit from 55 to 35 in, in, in front of the park and 25 or 35. Speed limit. Do I get a status report for that? <laughs> um, Matt, do you have anything to add? Yeah. I, just we. W let me, because I, I think I know where he's going to say, and you can add anything if you want to. Uh, the board adopted a resolution uh, um, in support of that. That resolution was then forwarded to NCDOT. At this point, it is in D NCDOT's hands. It is their discretion whether or not they wish to change the speed limit or not. Okay, so they're waiting for someone to get killed out there before they do it? I, I don't know what they're waiting for. Okay, could we find out pretty soon, please? We're, we'll be happy to follow up. Okay, thank you very much. The other one was the lights at 48, 43 and 55. We have people coming around that, making that left turn, coming into Pleasant Hill. 
and they lost some time control because at night it's so dark until they lose control. And we want to know, and we ask for lights at that and also lights in our community to be turned on. So do we have a status report on that? Ms. Horn, um, the street lights in the Pleasant Hill community, um, they are handled by Duke Energy, and we have to go out. If there's a light that's out, we have to go out to that pole, get that pole number, and report that back to D, um, DOT. And my husband and myself have gone out and got, I think there's like nine lights out mm -hmm. in that area, and we have reported that to DOT. So we're just waiting on them to, um, you know, it's not something that we can take presidents over and, and call them and, and, you know, request that they come out the next day to do it. But it has been reported. Okay, so this is going on. Hopefully the, the lights will be replaced soon. Okay, this is going on three years that we requested from Duke Energy now, to help us. are you talking about the lights that are out? Yes. Right. If a uh, light bulb blows out, is that what you're speaking yes, of? Yes, and okay. also the light uh, at 45, I mean 43, I don't know why I keep saying 45. 43 and 55, we request that two years before I even came into office, and then we followed up again this year, last year, and we still haven't heard anything from, so how long is it going to take? I have no knowledge of, you must have spoke to the present, the past, uh, all the about that, but I have no knowledge yes. of that particular incident that, with that light, but I can check into it for you. Okay, thank you very much. The other one is Pleasant Hill Community Center. Last year, we were told to get 501c status. We received that. They told us to get a plan. We received that. We turned it into park and recreation. We have not heard any more. I understand that we are supposed to go to the city engineer. We have not heard from him. So what's the status on that? I heard this man over here, uh, Mr. Stevens, that he had $500,000 in his budget. So does that take that much to build us a center? Um, I, I'm not sure about the five hundred thousand um, dollars, but uh, um, you know I, 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 these status updates. I, I don't know that we're necessarily prepared to answer all these. I'm more than happy to answer all the questions. I, I, you know, without calling Foster up here, I don't know whether this has been approved as part of the, uh, the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Um, this is, you know. About all I can tell you at this point. Right now, I can tell you that uh, uh, there's nothing in the budget to uh, um, for a uh, Pleasant Hill Community Center, um, and that's in the Parks and Recreation budget. Um, and uh, uh, moving forward, it's the board's discretion as to whether or not they wish to build a facility such as this. I think she might be referencing the work session that one time when we were playing with the numbers, and we had. Um, the community center up there and that was the amount of it but that was a hypothetical when we were working on that on the during the work session so that number okay I need to give our people a vision we would like to have a vision of a park they started out years ago and gave us a section of it we have not received anything else so we'd like to have a vision saying Pleasant Hill Community Center coming soon. So folks can start praying for it and looking for a vision. We've been there since 1865. We have never had a center. And the one that they gave to us is years ago when my mother was living. And now it's rusting and the windows are broken out and all that stuff. We need to honor our senior citizens that worked hard all these many years to establish New Bern and Pleasant Hill Community that we can have before we go off the scene, before I turn 80, that we can have a center out there that we can be proud of. Can someone help me? Tell me something, because we are praying. Ms. Horn, as I discussed with you earlier, I gave you all the specifics about how this process works. So if you please can, we'll get together again and I will talk with you again. Okay. Can appease you. Can we come in partnership with New Bern so we can start getting some funds to match your $500,000? We'll talk about this later, please. I, would I was talking to him. Oh, Mr. Stevens? Okay. Yeah, Mr. Stevens. Um, I, I, the, this board 
um, they allocate the funds based on what their vision and their decisions are. Uh, I produce them a budget. They have an opportunity to change anything that they want to. And I am almost positive that the, uh, uh, the city leaders would not turn down any opportunity at money that's raised uh, from the community. Okay. Thank you very much. So we're in partnership with New Bern. Alderman, to go for, to get some funds. All I'm asking is $1 from each person here in New Bern. So when I ask you for your $1, I'm asking a million people already started to get us some funds to get our center. Then we won't have no problem matching your $500,000. Okay? Okay. And the young man over there was talking about MS. Please let it come back. I am an MS survivor, and I would love for it to stay here in New Bern. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara, can I ask you a question? Did I understand that there's nine lights out there that are out? Yes. yes. And you've reported this to Duke Energy? Yes. I mean, yes. I'm not going to go into detail, but it has been reported. And how long has it been? Uh, probably maybe two weeks. No, not even quite a week. Okay. Yeah. We discussed it. And then we, me and my husband discussed it, and I talked with the mayor about it as well. And then... Uh, well, I mean, this is this is a reoccurring thing. I mean, that's it's okay. not you can't you can't expect them to you call them one day and they'd be out there with putting in lights. I mean, it's a, I, I think there would be a first come first serve basis with that type of stuff. Okay. Okay. This time we're going to go to item number four through eight, the consent agenda. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to uh, pull item number eight, approved minutes but approve the rest as stated. Do we have a second to that motion? A second. We have a motion by Alderman Bingham, seconded by, by Alderman Astor. Is there further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same, and you would like to maybe next, next, yes, next meeting? Yes, I'd like to. Uh, no, I'm, I, what I'd like to do is just work with the um, city clerk to amend the minutes um, to update um, item number 11, I believe it is. Hold on a second. Uh, yes, item number 11 to include some additional detail. Um, I understand from the city manager that his policy is that um, we're just in the minutes to not make them cumbersome, that uh, we're just stating the item and what the decision was, pro or con but no detail in there. So um, I would like, especially with a no vote, I would like some more detail on that. But of course, this board sees otherwise, but I would prefer for, there were several comments made. It was probably maybe a 15, 20 minute discussion reduced to, to one, one sentence. So I'm concerned about that and I would like to update it. And I'm happy to work with the okay. city clerk and then we can bring them back yeah. in our next meeting. If you meeting. need me to help with it, uh, whatever. No, we can watch the video. I've made some bullet points. Okay, great. You have Do a question? Yeah. Yes, sir. Did we um, decide that we weren't going to put comments in the minutes anymore or I don't know what's going on. Today happen. was the first day I heard about it. I, I'm happy to take direction from the board as to what level of detail you want. This, this, uh, the state statute only requires us to document the action that was taken. Uh, if you recall, there were several minutes ago uh, where um, we had a very extended discussion uh, and certain comments were initially added into the, uh, the minutes and then um, additional comments were wanting to be added into the minutes and it's very difficult from a right. staff's perspective to say okay well which comments are valid which ones out of this 20 minute discussion should we or shouldn't we put in here so it's a very difficult situation and like I said they've gone from what a state statute required which is taking the action to seven years or eight years ago when they had a court reporter in here that took down every um and ah that uh, was in the meeting um, and, and I don't think you want that level of detail, but it's very difficult without direction from each board that we, that we deal with as far as staff as to the level of detail you want the minutes, especially when it comes to your comments. So we're happy to work with you and do whatever we need to. That's the reason why your minutes are on here for approval. And if y'all wish to modify those at any point, you can simply pull them out of the consent agenda. We can make those modifications and have them back for you for the next meeting. Okay, that's what I'd like to do. 
Okay. Thank you. Well, before we go to act number nine, if the Boys and Girls Club would like to come up and get their picture taken real quick, we can do that. Would you like to come up here or you want us to go out there? It's your pleasure, sir. Let's go out there. Yeah, we just got to go and get their picture taken. <coughs> Okay, item number nine is, is a presentation of the free library Expansion project, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, tonight we have an uh, old friend of ours, Judy Hills, uh, former executive director of the Eastern Carolina Council, uh, who has, uh, uh, she's also a friend of the Newburn Craven County Public Library. Um, she's a board member there. She's going to share with us a PowerPoint presentation on the Little Free Library Expansion Project, which is a free book exchange here in Newburn. Uh, they're adding various locations. Um, uh, one of, that y'all may be familiar with uh, is down at Union Point Park, but uh, not to take away too much from your presentation, I'm going to let you have that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Alderman. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide an overview of this project, which resulted in five new Little Free Library locations in New Bern. This project celebrates the 50th anniversary of the Friends of the New Bern Craven County Public Library and the 50th anniversary of the library's original building at its current location. It also kicks off National Library Week, which is April 8th through 14th. Uh, again, for those who may not be familiar, uh, the Little Free Library is a national or an international organization that has to do with the free book exchange. This is a, our little free libraries will be added to the international map that's on their website. This project was chosen um, when our president of our organization, Joanna Strait, who's here with us this evening, I went to talk to Colleen Roberts uh, with regard to um, the additional Little Free Library locations. There was one uh, located at New Bern. This is a picture of Union Point Park. That was the original one that was placed there back in 2014. It was built by a Girl Scout, uh, Cadence Bass, and her grandfather as a Bronze Award project uh, for her Girl Scouts. Um, and this Little Free Library was in need of an update, so we were talking about how we could also fix that at that time. So who organized this project? We created an organizing coordinating committee, the Friends of the Library, uh, City of New Bern, Shop Class, which is a do-it-yourself community workshop, um, was involved, and artists from the uh, community artist gallery and studios were also. This is a true community partnership of government, nonprofit, and the for-profit entities. 
So who contributed? Well, we had a number of businesses, and we could not have done it without their support. The Sun Journal offered us five newspaper boxes that they uh, had no longer a need for. Shop Class offered their facility and various materials, and then Garris Evans Lumber offered us wood and post. We also had um, Mitchell Hardware helped us with some hardware that we needed. Wood came from Precision Molding and Woodwork, and Ari Bagel uh, helped us with some Bagel helped us with some sheet metal um, material. We also had a number of artists in our community who painted little free libraries. They did this as part of fulfilling a grant that their organization had received from the North Carolina Arts Council. These artists really enjoyed working together. They were led by Sandy Bruno. Uh, and several of our artists, Deb, Ginger, Joyce, Mary, and Brianna, were involved in the project. So who else contributed? We had designers and builders. Uh, Mo Howland was our lead, and Mo is the owner of Shop Class. We actually could not have done it without him and his facility. Several of the artists wanted to take him home, but his wife Polly had, wouldn't have anything <laughs> to do with that. We can't say enough about how accommodating uh, he was and he and his wife in helping us on this project. We had a number of other builders that assisted, and that was George Perry and Roger. So who else contributed? The city staff was very um, instrumental in making this happen. Colleen helped us with uh, publicity, uh, creating the partnership with the Sun Journal and basic project coordination. And Foster was a big help as well. His staff installed little free libraries, donated paint and art supplies um, for uh, so another part of the project I'll talk about in a minute, and he coordinated um, with the alderman for the presentation tonight. So they were very instrumental in helping us with that. So who else contributed? Well, the Friends of the Library, um, our board members, myself, we um, worked as helped to coordinate the project and providing assistance at an event that we held. We also purchased the registrations for these new Little Free Library locations. And this project aligns with our organization's mission to create a community of readers. So others that contributed, we had seniors at the Senior Center that painted friendship rocks. There's a picture of uh, one young lady there who was working on those rocks. In case you're wondering what they have to do with this project, we used them to put at the base of the little free libraries that are, have outdoor locations to, to enhance the um, enjoyability of them. The Newburn Historical Society gave us some books. Uh, the library provided Booker the Bear goodie bags for the April 7th event that we held. And they offered us some children's books as well to help do the initial stocking of the libraries. Uh, family and friends also provided neither and labor. We pressed everybody to work for this project. And how did the building and painting go? Well, here's some pictures you can see of while they were under construction and being painted. Um, everyone worked together, especially at the end, where we were trying to meet a deadline of April 5th to get everything finished. Uh, so those are some pictures of the work in process. So what happened on April 7th? We held a ribbon cutting and a grand opening at the Kidville location. The weather was problematic. We had a really neat outdoor event planned, but as things go, we ended up indoors. Subsequently, we didn't have quite as many children as we would have liked, but uh, many. We did have some. And uh, we thank Mayor Outlaw for coming and speaking to us at that event. Uh, he recognized Cadence and her grandfather for building that first little free library, so we appreciate that, Mayor. So where are these little free libraries now? Well, we have Union Point. We had one that we uh, were repainted, and that's the one you see on the right there is the new artwork that's on that uh, facility, that, that particular box. Uh, the one on the left is the new box that we're adding. We'll, we'll make one of them a children's box, and it'll be a little lower, and then we'll do one for adults and young adults there. So um, we're looking for, we have, still have one to put back in place yet. Um, the next uh, location was the Stanley White Recreation Center. We put two new boxes out front, one for children, one for adults and young adults. Um, we repurposed uh, the newspaper boxes. Those are what you're seeing there in, in those slides. Um, it was set up and filled with books on Thursday, April 6th. I was down there stocking it, and three little boys stopped by and asked what it was all about. And after I'd explained to them what was going on, um, the one said, oh, um, I love to read. He said, I'm going to stop by and pick up a chapter book on my way out. And so really hoping that he did. So we'll keep those boxes uh, filled with appropriate literature. The next place is Pleasant Hill Park for the lady who just presented there. We, we did put a new one out there. It's a very uh, lovely uh, thing. It is, in, it is in sight. It has 
books for both children, young adult, and adults. Uh, we put friendship rocks around the base of that. Uh, I went out there to check it 24 hours to make sure it wasn't leaking because of all the rain. And the friendship rocks had all found a good home, so we were, we were happy for that. And we also are going to be putting one in front of the police department. That will also be a repurposed newspaper box. The police department is still deciding exactly where they want to place it, so it's not in place yet, but it will be for that community around, around there. Uh, the Kidsville box, uh, we put a little uh, spire top on it so that it was congruent with the rest of the playground equipment there. And we set up, and we, then when I was stocking it that day, I already had customers taking books out of it, so that was kind of fun. Uh, the other place we have a uh, new location is the Hope Family Resource Center uh, waiting area for child protective services. So we just put that in place as well. Um, so again, the friends of the library will do the initial stocking of these and then we'll assist in the restocking. Uh, we've also set up an email group of all the little free library stewards in the area. We have several others. There's one at the church, one at a private school, and one with an individual. And we all are working together to make sure that we have the resources we need to keep these uh, boxes filled with appropriate reading literature for, for the community. And so what else do we hope to accomplish through this? We're partnering with the Early Childhood Learning Network and Smart Start for distributing information on the Dolly Parton Imagination Library Project. Um, this is a national program. Our community is participating uh, where children ages zero through four that register can receive an age-appropriate book monthly in the mail. And um, we're just helping them get the word out about that through our little free library. So we're trying to do as many things as we can. So project overview, we designed, built, painted, and installed seven new Little Free Libraries. We repaired and repainted one existing Little Free Library. We estimate we had over 250 hours of volunteer time. It's amazing how long these little projects take. And we estimate the value of the project to be $3,400, and that's a conservative estimate for labor and materials. So we um, thank everyone involved. And there's a few people here. I saw our, some of our artists. If all of you who were involved in the project, if you'll just stand up quickly. Come on, guys, get up. OK. <laughs> our artists, Jennifer and Anna, have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, they helped bring the project to fruition. And especially want to thank Mo Howland at Shop Class. We really could not have done it without him and his facility. <coughs> and we hope that the community takes and reads books in these libraries. There's no requirement to return them. Are there any questions? I just want to thank you for what you're doing. And uh, again, this is some more what Newburn's all about is the volunteerism and continuing to offer uh, different, different opportunities, particularly for our youth. And uh, we really appreciate what you're doing. All right. I just thank you so much. And when I received the email and I saw that one of these little free libraries was coming to Pleasant Hill, I was overjoyed. I jumped up, ran into the den, and told my husband. He's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, do you know that they're gonna, there's going to be a little free library box down there at the park? He didn't know what it was. <laughs> so I had to explain to him. And I just thank you. Another question is, if we want to drop off books, is there a location where we can drop off books instead of having to go to the little individual boxes and put? Well, like we all. All, all donations of books are accepted any time that the main library is open. Okay. Right. That's how we, the books that go to, the, to them are given to them. They go through and see what they need for the library, and then the balance usually, usually comes to uh, the friends of the library. We do them in our book sale. We also use you know, books from that too for the little free libraries as well to keep them stocked. So well, thank you again. Uh, yes, and thank you very much. Um, and we hope that you have fun with that. And anytime you think there's something that's needed regarding those, you're more than welcome to let us know. Thank you again. Appreciate it. This time we're going to go to item number 10, conduct pup hearing and consider adopting a statement of zoning consistency for 107 and 109 Beach Street. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, this public hearing was called for at our last meeting um, receiving it after receiving a request from Michael Stevens, the owner of 107 and 109 Beach Street. Uh, the reason being is to have this property rezoned from R6S residential uh, and uh, I-1 industrial to C3 commercial district. The property is located near the corner of Beach Street and Oaks Road, consists of approximately 1.14 acres. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board unanimously approved this request uh, at its March 6, 2018 meeting. 
Um, of course, as you all know, the state statute and local ordinances require the governing board to hold a public hearing and receive comments uh, on a requested rezoning. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Cbor. Uh, he is going to present to you uh, this particular piece of property for rezoning. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Board of Aldermen. My name is Bradley Cbor. I'm a planner with the Development Services Department here in the city. As Mr. Stevens said, uh, this is a uh, these two parcels are approximately 1.14 acres in size, and the applicant is looking to rezone them from R6S, which is a residential zoning district, and in I1, which is an industrial zoning district, to C3 commercial district for the purpose of conducting a retail business. At that location, on March 6th, the Planning and Zoning Board recommended unanimously that the Board of Aldermen approve this zoning change. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Board have questions at this time. Can I open the public hearing? Are you approved? Is that the presentation? Okay, this time I'm going to open a public hearing. And if anybody would like to come forward and ask any questions concerning this item, you're more than welcome to come up and make comments, statements, or ask questions. Do we have anybody from the public? Mr. Yeah. Th this has been approved by the zoning board, and now it's before the new board of aldermen for discussion. And there, so this the is public can comment. Public. If you have comments that you want to make for or against it, you can comment now. We'll vote after. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. After the public hearing. <clears throat> Does anybody want to speak? You have to come Excuse to the me. mic and give your name and, just, and address. Yeah. My name is Annette, and I live uh, about two, a block away from this uh, property, so I just kind of want to know what they're doing. Uh, since uh, about a year or two years ago, I was told I couldn't have a business in my backyard, even though it was only going to be open three or four hours a day. So now I want to know how they can switch on me here and what effect that might have on me. Do you want to answer that? Um, Mr. Story, you want to answer that? I mean, sure. that's what the, the zoning is requesting to be changed so they can do that. Okay, but that's just for that, those two parts. Two parts, right? yes, ma'am. Uh, somebody could answer that question. Just, just to be clear, uh, the city, uh, actually, we, we cannot, um, uh, we cannot basically comment or, or dictate what the specific use is. What we're looking at is, in general, the property and is the use consistent with the surrounding areas uh, uh, with the, the zoning request. Uh, the applicant is here and would like to uh, speak to this question. Hi, my name is Michael Stevens and I am the owner of the two parcels of land that are being considered for the zoning change and what my intent to use them for is uh, I'm going to transfer the, the white shack that's there on the corner that you pass daily. Um, and I'm going to conduct a small retail shop out of it, elevate it, and um, primarily it will be a lodge that's elevated and can host, um, you know, a small retail shop and operational hours would be primarily two to nine um, small events, birthdays, right there by the waterfront, um, maybe do kayaks, paddleboards, things like that. Um, shouldn't be too much of a disruption to the neighborhood. Okay. I wouldn't foresee any issues. Okay. That clarifies yeah. Thank you. Anybody else in the public would like to come up and ask questions, make comments? Um, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> close the public close hearing. Close the public hearing. Yeah. Um, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Do you want to make a, okay. um, Mayor, I make a, want to make a motion that we consider adopting a statement of zoning and consider adopting an ordinance to, to rezone 107 and 109 Beach Street from R6S residential to I1 industrial districts to C3 commercial district. Second. 
Two step, okay. two step process, Mayor. Okay, right. go ahead. Statement of zoning consistency first, then you entertain the motion to um, adopt the ordinance to rezone. Okay, did, did, you, did you hear what you want here as far as this being a statement of consistency? Y yes, sir. Or did you, you want more specific? You can call, do a roll call on the motion okay. to uh, adopt the statement of zoning consistency first. Can you just explain, I just want to make sure I'm clear what a zoning consistency is, please. Yeah. Our, our statutes require that the first step to a rezoning is to ensure that, that the change is consistent with all the proposed plans that exist in the city and the surrounding area. It's, it's kind of a macro check okay. as a first step. So do that. And, and if that doesn't pass, then you can't proceed to the rezoning. I understand. Okay. And that's a kind of a recent statute yes sir it used to be reversed it, it used to be that you could zone and then find the statement of consistency now they want the statement first which makes a lot more sense of course mark to make things easier for us in the future with this can, can we separate can it be separated yeah. like yes, 10 10 and 10 a or something like that certainly. so we know certainly two items that have to be yes, yes sir mm -hmm. we certainly could do that oh my best your your motion was to consider adopting a statement of zoning consistency was that what your state your that, that's motion correct was Correct. It's the board's okay with that. Yeah. We do have a motion second, and at this time we're going to have a roll call, starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom. Yes. Alderman Best. Yes. Alderman Kinsey. Yes. Mayor Outlaw. Yes. Alderman Astor. Yes. Alderman Harris. Yes. Alderman Bingle. Yes. And now we would need a motion associated with the zoning. Um, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we consider adopting an ordinance to rezone 107 and 109 Beach Street from R6S residential to I1 industrial districts to C3 commercial district. Second. Motion by Alderman Best, second by Alderman Kinsey. Is there further discussion? Seeing that we'll have roll call starting with Alderman Dingle. Alderman Dingle? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Adams? Yes. Motion carries on number 11, conduct a public hearing, considered adopting a statement of zoning consistency for 1225 South Liberty Road. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor and uh, members of the board. Uh, the city of Newburn owns the property that's located at uh, 1225 South Liberty Road. Public hearing was called for at our last meeting after the city's request to have the property rezoned from R6 residential to C4 neighborhood business district uh, and C4 uh, neighborhood business district to C3 commercial district. Uh, this property is located near the corner of News Boulevard and South Glen Burnie Road, consists of approximately 4.77 acres. Uh, for those who need kind of a, a picture of what property that is, it is the former water plant um, uh, that actually our water resources department operates from now. Uh, adjacent to uh, the McDonald's that's at the corner of uh, Glen Burnie and Noose. Uh, this is the subject property for the proposed relocation of this city garage. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Board unanimously approved this request at March 6, 2018 meeting. At this point, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Sebior if you have anything else to add. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to state that the request is consistent with all of our land use transportation plans and all nearby land uses, and staff recommends approval of the request. Okay, at this time, let the Auburn have questions. I'm going to have open a public hearing on this item. If anybody would like to come up and ask questions, make any comments, they're free to do so at this time. If no one wants to make a statement, I'd like to close this public hearing. A second. second. Motion second to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. I'd like to make a, I'd like to make a Adopt this statement of zoning consistency first. Second. Motion second. Yep. Is there a discussion? Have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries. My second motion is I'd like to adopt the, the ordinance of zoning. 1225 South Glen Murney Road from R6 Residential and C4 Neighborhood Business District to C3 Commercial District. Second. Motion by Alderman McKenzie, seconded by Alderman Odom. Is there a discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing so you know, we'll have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. 
Alderman Beagle? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 12 to conduct a public hearing and consider adopting an amendment to Article 21 of the Design Guidelines Performance Standards for Trent Road Corridor, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. On the 6th of March, 2018, staff presented to the Planning and Zoning Board proposed changes to the land use ordinance with respect to the design guidelines and performance standards along the Trent Corridor, uh, Trent Road Corridor, sorry. Uh, at that time, uh, Planning and Zoning voted unanimously to approve the changes. Uh, the next step is for the Board of Aldermen to conduct a public hearing and consider approval of those changes. Um, Mr. Senior, uh, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Uh, the main purpose behind the proposed changes that you see before you to the Trent Road corridor overlay are to enable further development of the corridor. Uh, currently, it's mostly built out along Trent Road, and uh, there's not that many parcels left available for development, and the parcels that are still there have uh, some site design constraints based on the way that utilities and drainage ditches, that sort of thing, are set up. With the way that the overlay is requirements are structured right now, it makes it so that anyone who wants to continue to develop in that corridor basically have to go through a variance process to eliminate a couple of the, the, uh, the setback requirements um, that are currently in the overlay and we're proposing to take out. So uh, staff has put together this, this draft for you uh, so that it will simplify the development process for any incoming or existing businesses in the corridor. Does the board have questions? Okay, Mayor. I just, yes. Just very simply, um, I just want to understand something. So if people have residential property on that corridor, which there are some residential properties, and originally this was some of the zoning issues were setbacks and things because they were residents and landscape, they can switch to commercial and sell their property and be a commercial property, and this would fit that without any problem? Or um, vice versa, if it's commercial and somebody wanted to be residential? Could that be the case? Does this change any of that? It does, this doesn't decrease any options that land owners in the corridor have, if that's your question. Okay, because I understand well, what they're doing is, you don't, right now, currently, the houses are set back, that's, and the landscaping that were in there. Um, Alderman Odom, I, I know you're more familiar with this than I am. Do you understand what my question is? I think so. Um, based off of what uh, the presentation shows, it looks like we're removing some requirements. Um, and this doesn't change zoning, correct? This, this does not change zoning, overlay. though, and it doesn't right. eliminate setbacks. It's just we have an additional setback requirement. The corridor overlay requires that the buildings be built within a certain range instead of to a minimum standard. And because of this, uh, with the way utilities are set up in the corridor, there are some buildings that would have to be set back substantially further than the 50-foot maximum that the guidelines currently state. Okay. So this, this would affect more new development than it would something that's already built, correct? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, this time I'm going to look for a public hearing. Anybody like to come up and ask questions concerning this item? You're welcome to come up. Seeing none, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second. So I'm in favor of the motion to say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt an amendment to Article 21, Section 15, 463, Design Guidelines and Performance Standards, Trent Road Corridor of the Land Use Ordinance. Second. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Any further discussion? Start with a roll call with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Beagle? Yes. I'm number 13, consider a public hearing on the system development fee analysis and consider adopting a resolution approving the analysis, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, in July 2017, North Carolina General Assembly passed House Bill 436, amending Chapter 162A of the General Statutes by adding Article 8, system development fee. This new article intends to provide uh, for uniform authority with respect to implementing system development fees for public water and sewer systems as well as to clarify the applicable statute of limitations. The amendment uh, requires a written analysis be performed uh, to calculate the system development fee based upon prescriptive criteria 
Uh, that's all outlined in uh, the statute. In response to this requirement, the city employed Rivers and Associates Incorporated to perform a professional analysis. Uh, prior to considering adoption of this analysis, the House Bill 436 requires the local government post the analysis on its webpage for public review and comment for a minimum of 45 days. Uh, this has been completed. No written comments were received. Uh, the city is now required to hold a public hearing prior to the consideration of adopting the analysis. That is before you tonight. Uh, that is included in your packet. There's a memo from Mr. Hughes, our city engineer, as well. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, the question I have is uh, if, if the cons I know the engineer is here tonight, if you'd like to come forward and just kind of in layman terms explain just a little bit about what this study is all about and the applicability of it. I think that would be appropriate to, for the public to be able to understand a little bit better what's going on here. Sure. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I hope I don't get... And, and where we are and if we're in compliance and any, any comments you'd like to make on the, on the uh, study? First of all, I had some dental work done right before I came here, so if I look a little weird, sorry. <laughs> um, essentially, before you had system development fees or impact fees that were considered um, with the house bill to be illegal. Uh, what we did was took the city's uh, capital assets for water and for sewer, uh, deducted any um, grants, uh, the depreciation for that, and then divided uh, for the water system divided that by the capacity of the water system. And for the sewer system, divided that by the capacity of the sewer system to get a, a fee that if a developer came in wanted to, to develop a piece of property, essentially he would buy in to your system. And that is what the, the system development fee is put forth and all the calculations and backup documentation is provided in the report to do that. Is that? Well, I mean, basically $15, $20 to replace a gallon of, gallon of sewer. You, you figured that up. Yeah, I think it would work out to be like $6 per gallon per day. Yeah. And uh, I, I do know that years ago, I haven't kept up with the most recent statute, I do know that the general, the general statute required that that a municipality break that down as to the true cost of tapping that line versus the cost of any capital improvement or whatever you wanted to call that. Mm -hmm. And what you were charging for a tap fee. And how does that work now? Is that the same way it works? Well, I think more of the uh, <coughs> system development fee is for providing that person capacity. The actual tap fee is, is a totally separate. That's what it is always was supposed to be. A right. Separate, separate item. Yes, the only sir. place I've ever seen that in writing was um, at Bridgeton uh, Tri Community or the, the water system over there. They, they specifically put it on their brochure. Yes, sir, Mayor. Prior first, to, prior first to this, sanitary. Prior to this house bill, there was, was very little guidance from the state on how these fees were to be derived across the state. And as you can imagine, over the years, uh, each municipality or each system came up with a different flavor that seemed to fit their municipality or their system very well. Uh, and what happened over decades, you end up with a hundred different flavors of how these fees, even the terminology, gets quite mixed up. Some places they're tap fees, impact fees, development fees, capacity fees. We came up with the term maneuver of capital recovery fees. So uh, what the statute has done, I think, is a very good job of of painting uh, the state with a, a uniform brush of how these fees are to be determined, even to, uh, what they're to be called, how they're to be applied, uh, the methodology used in determining them, the, method, uh, the, the frequency of how that has to be reviewed, the difference between the system development fee and the connection fee that you're talking about, the actual cost to make the tap all, that language that's uh, kind of been assumed for many years is now very concrete in general statute. So it, I think it really helps municipalities across the state to have a a, a uniform platform so everybody's kind of on the same page as we assess these two new developers coming in. We're all doing it from the same book. And was was that money to be put into a sinking fund or, or, or 
Very, very good question. Another, another part of the general statute actually has a very good section there on what you could do with the money. So, so before it was some people put that in capital operation. reserve, some people run, rolled it right back in operation. Now it's very detailed on the type of fund that has to be set up, what those funds can be spent for. So it's, it's kind of taken all the guesswork out of how to, how to develop a, a system development fee and fund it and appropriate the funds and use those funds. It's all very detailed in this, in this, uh, in this new general statute. Some people, this will be a, a shock to the system. This will be quite different from the way they operate. Very fortunate here in New Bern, our, our current practice prior to the general statute is almost to the letter identical to what is required in the general mm -hmm. statute. One of the few things we are missing in it, in it that was required as part of the general statute was this professional analysis. You have to have an independent body come in, review all the financial documentation, review all the capital assets to determine what that per unit cost is. Um, and so that, that's what Rivers and Associates has done for us, and that's what we've got for public hearing and comment tonight to see if anybody has any additional comments on that analysis to determine what that per unit cost would be. Does that have to be uh, updated every so often? Every or? five years. Every five yes, years. Sir. Yes, sir. Jordan, what's the cost of this fee, this study that was done? Any idea? I think it's 10000 10, So, so 10000 every three years? Five. Every five, five years. Every five years, and that was a requirement that Raleigh put on us, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and now that the initial work is done, it, it, I, I would imagine in five years it would be a little less complex to go back through because then you're basically just inputting new capital information and new financial information into the, into the formulas that have already been developed. So it should be a little easier and cleaner the next year. And this is kind of a first dive into this for everybody that's had to do it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I really appreciate you um, giving us some explanation of that. We're going to have a public hearing at this time. Anybody would like to come up and ask any questions about this item, you're more than welcome to come up. Mayor, may I would like to make a motion that we close the public hearing? Second. Motion and second to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Mayor, I would like to make a motion we adopt a resolution approving the analysis. Second. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman McKenzie. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman McKenzie? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingley? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, item number 14, consider adopting a resolution approving the conceptual. Master plan for Martin Marietta Park, uh, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the board, uh, as you recall, at the March 19, 2018 work session, uh, a representative from McGill Associates presented a master plan for the Martin Marietta Park. Uh, prior to considering adoption, the conceptual plan will again be reviewed in some detail. Uh, there's a memo that's included in your packet, and also tonight we have with us um, Mike Norris from McGill Associates, and they're going to run through this uh, presentation for the Martin Marietta Park master plan. Uh, just as a, uh, um, an update to you, as you will recall, uh, at that meeting, March 19th, we uh, informed you that there is a deadline for us to submit an application for part of funds. That is May 1st. Uh, and if we're going to meet that deadline, one of the requirements of that application require us to have a master plan approved. So uh, that is one of the reasons why we're here before you tonight uh, to work with you, uh, the board, answer any questions you may have with regards to the master plan. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Hughes now for the presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. Uh, as Mr. Stevens said, we, we're looking forward to presenting the plan uh, for Martin Marietta Park. We have a few updates from the previous uh, concept plans that you saw. So at this time, introduce Mike Norris with McGill Associates to present that. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Board, um, <clears throat> we had, uh, uh, at our last meeting, we gave a fairly thorough presentation of the, the process, the, the needs assessment, the survey results. Um, I've summarized a lot of that. Uh, we'll go through some changes and, and focus somewhat on more of the priorities for development should this be approved and adopted. Um, but I will hit some of the highlights from that, that presentation. Again, this, uh, uh, the scope of work that we looked at was site assessment as well as needs assessment. Uh, we had a lot, uh, a large outreach for public input, uh, design considerations, conceptual design, and, and today we'll be talking about part of the uh, recommendations and the implementation process. Um, <clears throat> our two primary methods of, of gaining citizen input 
was through an uh, online survey and uh, a public meeting we held at the, uh, the Newburn Mall. Had, both had great responses. Uh, had over 200 people participate in the, uh, the charrette, the all-day charrette at the, uh, the mall. And from that meeting, one of the exercises, if you were there, you may recall the, the visual preference survey uh, where we, we had participants place dots on amenities they would like to see. So as you can tell, we had a lot of participation. Um, here's another example. So um, I'm not going to count these dots for you, but uh, we, right here is our, our top facilities, um, amenities, if you will, that uh, they're in gold that uh, rose above all the other amenities. Um, a, lot, a lot of focus on outdoor performance area. Uh, biking, walking trails, as you can imagine, were important. Uh, Water-based recreation. This is uh, this site's fortunate that you've got a a, a number of opportunities available for that. Um, some of our uh, uh, what we call uh, adventure type of recreation with zip lines, um, nature trail, wildlife preserves. So there was a, a number of other amenities that were also uh, considered as well that are are part of this plan. And then we had a uh, an online survey and a great response, over 853 responses from that survey representing uh, a little over 1,500 uh, uh, people. And uh, we wanted to list, on that survey, we had uh, uh, asked the, uh, the person filling it out, they would identify which ward they uh, lived in. Um, and this park is, uh, as you may know, is in located in Ward 5, which uh, Barbara Best is, is, uh, represents that ward. And from that, uh, that survey, again, a lot of the common themes that uh, were represented from the public meeting, uh, walking trails, water-based recreation, general day use activities such as picnic areas, playgrounds were also common, but uh, th this property also has a lot of opportunity for environmental education. Um, more of, uh, and a good balance of that I think is important with any kind of, of park planning. <clears throat> um, one important question I thought rose above a lot of, uh, a lot of the other questions was, do you, are you f in favor of uh, expanding recreation opportunities in New Bern? And, and uh, well over 95% were uh, in favor of expansion. And, uh, and another question we had there was concerning nominal fees, would you be willing to pay a nominal fee to use a special use facility, a special facility or a, an event, and again, uh, a very favorable, favorable response. Um, so from the, the community input that we received, the overarching elements that uh, we felt were, and this is in working with, with city staff, was uh, uh, bike, walking trails, outdoor performance area, open space, uh, water-based recreation, and adventure activities, and we'll talk about some of these elements uh, here uh, as we as we move forward in this presentation just to give you a uh, context um, the site is just uh, northwest of downtown um, and it's it's fairly close by it's not too far it's it's uh, conveniently located to uh, within the city the sites between 850 and 900 acres so uh, as you can tell uh, a majority of this is is water uh, which is unique. Uh, the central area, no, I'm not able to point some of these things out, but one of the central areas there uh, you're familiar with was the land donation of, uh, that's approximately the peninsula, if you will, it's approximately uh, around 80 acres, and that offers a, a, a opportunity for a, a program of, of multiple amenities that can be used there, as well as uh, trails and, and a variety of things that can be located in and around the uh, perimeter of the property. <clears throat> this is the, the overall plan. Um, I want to just spell out a few of the, uh, or point out a few of the opportunities that this presents itself. We, we have a new river that is directly adjacent to, to the site. Um, and there's actually an existing canal which offers not a, a unique opportunity where you can come from off site to the park um, via boat. And, and that's, that's very unique. Not, not a lot of park, parks are, have that opportunity. Um, in addition, there's, there's a lot of existing, uh, if 
we call those just, just access roads around the property that were used during the operation. Uh, those can easily be uh, improved to walking, biking trails that, that surround the perimeter of the property. And some of you may have already been on those, but, uh, and they are, they're used today. Uh, you'll find folks that might want to get, that are interested in the site that uh, uh, will we'll use these trails. Um, but the, uh, the area that's focused on much of the development is this peninsula area, which is, is central to, uh, to this plan. Um, and uh, I want to talk a little bit to you in the detail of, as far as what we're proposing in this area. Um, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the things that, that we found from the public was um, a, a large variety of, of uses that uh, every, everyone had, had an idea or a thought of what they would like to see there. Um, what we wanted to do was try to balance that, those amenities and determine what, what, are, what, what belongs here and, and what makes um, sense from a park planning standpoint and how to distribute those within this, this peninsula, if you will, um, so that they complement each other. However, they're all connected. Uh, we, we've purposely uh, added a lot of walking, biking trails that would connect to, to all the amenities. So they're easy accessible. Uh, we have a central spine road for vehicular circulation that would um, connect to these areas as well. <laughs> In addition to that, we've got parking access that uh, is distributed. There's not one large parking area. We've divided that up so that it would uh, provide distribution to many of these amenities. So I wanted to, to point out a, a few highlights of these areas. Um, the adventure area um, is, is central to, to the park. Um, it includes a variety of, of of amenities that are, I would say, more geared towards the younger generation. Um, things like skateboard park, a bike pump course, adventure ropes course. Uh, but there's also opportunities for, for senior adults, such as fitness stations. Through, anyone at any age can, can use this. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's themed for that type of recreation and they, they comp the uses complement each other, so we felt it would be appropriate to have those uh, within this general area here that's central to the park. Another area that received a lot of interest was an outdoor performance area. Um, we've, we planned for a, a 5,000 seat area for this amphitheater with uh, also the, the plan is if it could expand if needed uh, and if the demand is there, but uh, we wanted this also to be located strategically. Uh, orientation was important for sun angles, uh, but we also felt like it'd be nice to have this close to, to the lakes, one of the lakes, so you'd have a, a visual uh, background of the lake would, that would be appealing to the participants and the spectators. Um, again, we would we would also want to have vehicular access to this area, not only for participants to, to drive to, but also just from the operation of having performances where you're going to have uh, equipment coming in and, and loading, unloading, so we felt that was important. You can see the canal just to the right of that, so uh, that could offer a unique experience where you could actually come to a, a performance event via boat. So uh, there is that opportunity as well. Um, the Swim Beach area. If you recall, we, we've made a little switch on the, the Swim Beach area from, I'm going to go back if, I, if you would where we have the swim beach area shown here, that was actually located at where the boathouse area is. And uh, city staff did a little due diligence. We wanted to check some of the depth of the water, and we felt like this might be a, a more appropriate location uh, for the swim beach. So we've, we've switched this, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the planning process is always fluid. So uh, we, uh, we've moved it over here, and it's still a, a great location. Um, in this, inside this area, we have a, a variety of amenities in addition to the, the swim beach, the uh, playgrounds, uh, walking trails, uh, observation towers. Um, so a good, a good variety there that uh, would be uh, considered for this area. <coughs> and then the, uh, what we're calling the, the boathouse area. The boathouse is, is more than just a boathouse. Um, it's, it's more of a community building. However, it's, it's 
Uh, you, could, you could use it for a number of different things, such as uh, events for uh, community space, such as festivals or uh, banquet halls, a variety of things there, as well as having uh, central to, to the boating, is having boat docks and a variety of things there, covered shelters. Um, and then over to the right of the plan, you'll see where we have boat docks for canoes. Uh, whatever type of, of boats would be uh, housed in this area, but they would be, we are proposing they would be non-motorized. But I just wanted to sh uh, share with you a few examples of the vision that we've kind of seen in working with city staff and, and hearing the public comments. So um, an outdoor performance area. A variety of trails, not only uh, wide, but some of these uh, areas would be boardwalks, some of them would be soft surface, some may be paved. A swim beach area that could do uh, offer an, a, a number of opportunities. This again was very favorable from the public in their input. And again, as I mentioned before, the there's a multitude of opportunities for boating, um, and and whether it's sailing or paddle boarding, paddle paddle boards or or windsurfing. So there's a, a number of opportunities there. And some of the high adventure elements, ropes course, BMX bike park, skateboard park. And then uh, in Swim Beach we have the Wibbit course proposed there. So uh, again a wide variety. Uh, playgrounds, again that could be something that uh, is phased in. It can be a multiple uh, segments of playground implemented over time. In the community building, what we're calling the boathouse, that's uh, multifunctional, that could do a, a variety of things for uh, for the public. Um, and so, the overall uh, what what we want to do is 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 look at how this park could be implemented, uh, and, and talk with you about it. We've we proposed three initial phases. Uh, and this is primarily based on the magnitude of, of work involved, uh, as well as thinking about grant opportunities. Uh, as you know, grant op as you apply for grants, you want those to be uh, attractive to those funding agencies. So making sure if, if you do f uh, submit a, a, a grant application, the amenities within that application uh, should complement the grant and make that advantageous for funding. So we, we evaluated that as well. Uh, so I want to share with you three of our proposals on, uh, or a few of our proposals for the implementation. Um, an initial phase, which would take advantage of a lot of the existing trails. Um, it would also uh, provide uh, fishing and boating access, uh, picnic shelters, playgrounds. Um, however, you'd also still need to have some of that infrastructure improvements, such as utilities, uh, restroom facilities. And, and uh, roadway improvements that are typical of an initial phase of development. Um, this would also, the trail system would also tie to uh, some of the uh, residential neighborhoods of, off Moose Boulevard, which would provide that connectivity piece, piece that we've, uh, we've wanted to try to achieve. Um, a second phase, we focused on, on the, the amphitheater, the swim beach, and potentially a, a uh, bike pump course that is central to the to the park and a third phase uh, a boathouse multi-purpose trails uh, again improved open play space and nature trails there there's there's other elements of the park master plan that aren't proposed in these three phases however we felt like from a from just Understanding the magnitude of what we're trying to implement, we felt like focusing on these these three priorities would would have a have a um, a level of having a, a big part of the park in place. Um, these are are high reaching goals, but again, there's a lot to do here. But we felt like for let's focus on these these three elements, and as opportunities arise, whether it's grant or partnerships, we can focus on those as as they uh, come into play. Um, so specifically looking at phase one, um, multi-purpose trails um, throughout the park in a, in a variety of areas, fishing, boating access, picnic shelters, restrooms. Um, this estimate was approximately $1 million in that initial phase. 
the second phase, amphitheater, swim beach, pump bike course. We've estimated that to be roughly $1,400,000. Uh, and you can see the, you know, we've got some, some estimates, some big ticket items with regard to the, the amphitheater and swim beach development. But again, this is, this is something that uh, as the park gets developed, these are going to be elements that were high on, the, high on the priority list from the public. And a phase three, which would, would inc also include some, some popular items such as the boathouse or the, the multi-purpose facility, uh, more trails, um, open space, landscape, green areas. In this, uh, this phase three, we have estimated at uh, just under 1.4 million. So implementation opportunities were, are something that we talked about at the, uh, the last meeting we had and, and trying, to, trying to take advantage of those. Um, and there are a number of things that we need to evaluate and, and consider. Uh, partnerships and sponsorships. I wanted to, to think about what, what elements of this master plan could there be partnerships with? Uh, elements such as outdoor performance area, skate parks, uh, playgrounds, fitness stations, those are, are something, elements where we, we could have partnerships there. Concessionaires is, is more privatizing those elements. Uh, if we had a, uh, a company or a, um, an individual that wanted to, to handle, for instance, a, um, a ropes course where they come in and construct that and operate that, that, that puts all the liability on them. It also saves in, in staffing, so it's an element that Again, it's been proven that that can be privatized um, and, and handled it through a concessionaire. And then there's elements for implementation through funding. Um, we've, we talked about Part F grant applications. That's a, a state-funded opportunity. Um, CAMA grants, uh, Wildlife Resource Commission, Division of Water Resources, a number of grants to look at over time and, and often that can be used for implementation of, of many of these elements. So, um, we've, we've, we've shared with you some, some potential phasing. Um, as we, we talked, there, there is an opportunity for ap applying for a, uh, a North Carolina Parks Recreation Trust Fund grant. Um, but I would uh, welcome any questions or comments you have regarding any, any aspect of the presentation tonight. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I have some questions for you. Um, when I was looking at your survey findings and I was a little alarmed to see that Ward 5 only got 7%, um, is that, how did you derive that, that percentage? Is that through the uh, community survey that was turned in? That, and it was no, that was through the, on, the online survey. Okay. Um, there were other avenues, uh, whether the surveys were handed out or uh, through the, we didn't, for instance, the participation at the, the Newburn Mall we didn't. We were not able to capture what district or what ward uh, those individuals lived in, so that wasn't captured. So there's there's a variety of things, but that came directly from the web-based survey. Okay. So then that number could rise considering could. Yes, the participation at the mall. And then I had another question. So the community boathouse, in what capacity would that hold? Um, we're looking at a, a facility. It's maybe. Uh, Five, 7,000 square feet, you could probably have 100, 200 people. You know, it, it, there's a, uh, we haven't gotten into that detail, but that's, that's what we're anticipating. Okay. So you probably haven't gotten into this detail, but with your prior experience in um, some of the grants that you mentioned. Yes, ma'am. Do you maybe have a figure of what those grants really um, would uh, fee amount for those grants? The, for instance, the, uh, the funding amounts. Mm -hmm. uh, the North Carolina Parks and Recreation Trust Fund, for instance, it's, it's one of the most popular programs for, for local governments in North Carolina. Okay. Um, very competitive grant, but they will find a fund up to $500,000 for a, a matching grant, a dollar for dollar match. So you could, if you had a million dollar project, they could match uh, 500000 of that. Okay. Uh, up to that amount. Of course, you can apply for less than that, but that's uh, that's the max for that. Uh, some of the other grants, um, 
are, are maybe smaller. Um, a camogram would, would not fund that amount, amount typically. Uh, the recreation trails programs, again, we've seen uh, a variety of funding amounts from that, anywhere from 100 to three to four hundred thousand okay. dollars. Um, so there's, it depends on the, the amount you're requesting and again, the, the amount of funds they have available in many cases can determine how you're funded. Just wanted to check, I was um, at the presentation you did at the um, West Newman Recreation Center. Mm -hmm. Uh, really good, very well attended, and lots of questions asked. So have you taken those comments and questions and tried to update and fold since that, that time when you did it? Because I thought some of the questions were, were reasonable. They asked about an environmental impact study. Do we have to do anything like that? Would that be part of you know additional funds that we need? I know that uh, if you do the screen with the different lakes in there, isn't one of those lakes where the effluent goes in? Right. So Very is good. it the one in the top, the top yeah. part of the picture? Yes, okay. A little darker blue color. Mm -hmm. So that's where we dump our effluent. So, Correct. I mean, do you have to take special precautions? Do we need additional funding to do anything <clears throat> with that? Well, the, some of the questions that were, were asked were, were regarding water quality. And we have done some uh, preliminary testing through the, the county environmental health. And those tests have come back very clean. I okay. won't say very clean, but good with, re, re, with regard to, to using it for water-based recreation, even, even the, the, uh, the upper lake, the effluent lake. Um, we've uh, had some discussions with DOT with regard to the access. Um, and they've been... As you could expect, they, they, they've reviewed the master plan so well. As, as your park is phased in with development, they'll evaluate it at each phase to determine if there's any requirements from a, a, a roadway improvement um, on Glen Burning Road. But uh, the initial phases uh, would have to be evaluated on case by case. But um, they're, you know, they, they mentioned that. Uh, the initial phase we talked about wouldn't wouldn't probably require any type of substantial roadway improvements uh, on wood burning. Um, but to answer your question, it is what is required from a, uh, for instance, if you're applying for a North Carolina Part F grant, um, the level of due diligence that we've done is typical for uh, for this process. Um, and then the only other question that they asked that night, and I haven't seen specific numbers, is the parking. So you've got 5,000 people at the amphitheater mm -hmm. parking for them and then you've got a skate event going on at the skate park that could be people and then you've got somebody at the boathouse that's right. 300 people right Do, uh, you know will you have to declare how many parking spaces are on this as part of the master plan that you're sending to part of um, you, you would not well you would say how many parking spaces are there but as far as a requirement you know for instance uh, the boathouse building or, or facility there probably would be a parking requirement for that. The amphitheater is going to have a parking requirement. Um, one of the things we've talked about as far as minimizing impact, trying to keep as much of this, this park facility um, preserved, and what I mean by that is it's not dedicating um, the required parking for an amphitheater there when it might be used six times a year or however many times. Right. But having opportunities whether it's either shuttle or overflow parking that's not improved parking. For instance, we're, we're looking at uh, the, uh, uh, I don't have a pointer here, but just just north of the day use area is, is town owned property that appears to lend itself to where it might be used for overflow parking during those, those larger events. But um, what we've done is, is suggested and proposed parking that we feel like would be adequate for those particular uses. However, not including a large performance area at, at the embassy. I just want to make sure these were just some of the things that they had been incorporated right, right. into. Uh, and and one of those was, was the water dip for a swim beach. And we've, we've also um, had that investigated. And, and again, it's, we've had uh, uh, some tweaks due to that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments by board <clears throat> on the side? I mean, 
uh, Mayor White make a motion that we consider adopting the resolution approving the conceptual master plan for Martin Marietta Park. Second. Motion by Alderman Best, second by Alderman Harris. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Kinsey? Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. This time, uh, item number 15, consider adopting a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with Morton Trucking. Uh, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, certified bids have been received for the 2018 street resurfacing project. Morton Trucking Incorpor <coughs> excuse me, Incorporated submitted the lowest bid at $976,130, and the uh, board is asked to consider adopting a resolution authorizing the city to enter into a contract with the bidder. Project is slated to begin within 30 days and has a uh, contract period of 180 days. Uh, there's a memo that's been included in your packet uh, from Mr. Montaigne. Uh, we're both here to answer any questions that you may have. Additionally, uh, just uh, as an aside, uh, we have also provided and included a list of the streets to be resurfaced uh, with this particular uh, res street resurfacing project. Uh, happy to answer any questions you have. Or have questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we adopt the resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with Morton Truck and Company, Inc. for a 2018 street resurfacing project and any changes with the budgeted amount. Second. Motion by Alderman Astor, seconded by Alderman Harris. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Beal? Yes. Okay, motion carries out. This time we're going to go to item number 17. Consider adopting an ordinance amending the 2017 Water Improvements Project Fund. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. The 2017 Water Improvements Project Fund was established by ordinance on January 24, 2017, with an initial budget of one $1.57 million for repair and replacement of water infrastructure at various locations throughout the city. Additional funds in the amount of $617,737 have been deemed necessary to complete the final phase. Uh, this budget ordinance uh, will appropriate those funds from the Water Capital Reserve Fund. Uh, there's a memo that's included in your packet from Mr. Hughes, and he and I are answering any kind of questions you may have. Does the board have questions? Are we still within our cash, day's cash on hand? by doing this? Uh, yes, ma'am, we are. Okay. That's all I need to know. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt the ordinance amending the 2017 Water Improvements Project Fund. Second. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Is there further discussion? Seeing those have a roll call, starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 18, consider adopting an ordinance amending the 2017 Sewer Improvements Project Fund, Mr. Stevens. Similar to your last one, Mayor uh, and Board, this uh, will actually amend uh, the sewer fund. Uh, this is for additional work that is necessary. Uh, the initial project was uh, funded at an uh, amount of $1.4 million for repair and replacement of sewer infrastructure at various locations within the city. Additional funds in the amount of $611,059 will be deemed necessary to complete this final phase. Uh, there's a budget ordinance uh, that's uh, uh, included in your packet. Mr. Hughes, uh, Mr. Sabatelli, or myself will answer any questions. Support have questions. Yes, I might answer a question, please. Um, how is it that, what, what takes place in order for additional funds to be needed to actually complete a project that you've already put in in a budget amount? I know there's a lot of uh, circumstances that come into play, but I just want to know from my own knowledge. 
So uh, essentially, when you know when we get out here and, and we have an initial bid based on a, an engineer's estimate of what we project this cost to be and what we're looking to do, a lot of this work was associated with some of the street resurfacing that we're doing throughout the city. When we get out there, you dig this stuff up, you determine that it's far more deteriorated in some places, may require some more work, may need some more services here or there. Uh, ultimately, we have to make some modifications. And I think that case in these particular instances, um, Jordan, if you want to detail some of those, I'm sure you, you have a lot more detail than I do. Uh, Alderman Best, the best way I can describe utility replacement with the age of the water and sewer infrastructure have a new, but a lot of times it's like pulling a thread on a sweater. There, there's not a good stopping point sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so even your best laid plans, when you plan on starting at po uh, uh, point A and ending at point B, uh, point B may end up another block or two blocks away. As you get to the place you plan on reconnecting the entire thing back together, you find out the infrastructure there is too deteriorated to, to tie into. Uh, and these projects typically evolve and grow. As we find more deteriorated infrastructure that needs to be replaced, we have to add streets. That adds streets to the paving. And then you run into the same situa situation with the paving. You've got to try to find convenient points to stop and start the paving. So these things tend to start with a very late, a very good plan based on all the information we have uh, from old record drawings and um, notes from the, you know, the, the field crews from condition of infrastructure. As we get in there and we start actually excavating the street and find out what's down there, uh, this, is, this is very common where we, you know, we plan on going from you know, point A to point B and point B now is two blocks down the street. We've had to add three side street connections uh, as, as we've gone along. So th this isn't an uncommon practice. All right, thank you. And then ultimately, and, and just to kind of wrap all that up, uh, the, the funds, I think you kind of asked where does it come from. So the funds essentially come from a capital reserve fund that we have in each one of the specific enterprise funds for water and sewer specifically for purposes such as this so that we can go and actually uh, uh, make these improvements on, on some of our failing and, and aging infrastructure. And just one, one, one important thing to keep in mind, these, these contracts are all unit price contracts that we pay per foot or per, per square yard. So the, the cost of the work isn't any more. We're just doing more work, replacing more infrastructure. Thank you. Ms. Sabatelli, on your um, letter in the attachment, you've got the water, the sewer, and then you've also got 200000 for stormwater. Yes, sir. But I don't see a, an ordinance asking for that to change is uh, that yes sir that we're uh, speaking with uh, mr. Montaigne we're going to include that as part of the 1.5 million dollar stormwater project that was done okay. so that is technically already budgeted for okay thank you uh, mayor I'd like to make a motion to adopt the ordinance amending the 2017 sewer improvement project fund second Motion by Alderman Harris, seconded by Alderman Bingo. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingo. Alderman Bingo? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. I remember 19, consider adopting a budget ordinance amendment for the 20. Fiscal year 2017-18 operating budget, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, this budget ordinance amendment provides for the transfers from the water and sewer capital reserve funds to the 2017 water and sewer improvements projects fund as described in the previous two items that you just approved. It also acknowledges a $14,000 grant that was received by the fire department from the North Carolina Department of Public Safety. Uh, the grant requires no match and the funds will be used to provide training opportunities in water rescue, urban search and rescue as well. Uh, lastly, the amendment also appropriates $450,000 to stormwater maintenance for the purchase of a new Vactor truck. Uh, this is a truck that uh, currently has some major repairs that are necessary, well over uh, $50,000 in repairs that are needed. Uh, it's an old uh, vehicle, actually. It was uh, handed down from the uh, sewer department uh, as, as a used, well-used uh, piece of machinery when we originally formed the stormwater uh, division. Uh, delivery of the new truck takes approximately eight to ten months to get it because they have to uh, manufacture this truck. It's a very specific piece of equipment with a lot of moving parts. Um, and the purchase will be made by transferring $200,000 from fund balance and obtaining $240,000 that will go towards the 2019 debt service proceeds, which we budgeted for in our upcoming budget. I'm happy to answer any kind of questions you may have. Board, I have questions. Mr. Stevens, can we? Let the sewer fund pay for this. Um, and just in this spirit of transparency, we had this conversation yeah. earlier today, and the, just some concern about general fund and and 
you know, with it being an enterprise fund? And I just the, the, the difficult thing is, is that, um, you know, this, this piece of machinery is used four to five days a week uh, when we're available to in the stormwater division. Uh, so to appropriately account for that, um, you know, I, I'm not sure that it, I, I'm not sure how the auditors would feel about us uh, uh, doing so. Um, now, uh, could potentially the um, uh, sewer department look at purchasing uh, a new one and then handing another old one down to the stormwater fund? I mean, we, we definitely could look at that practice. I'm not exactly sure about that as well because technically, if you're looking at these as separate business entities, um, in reality, the uh, stormwater fund should probably pay for whatever the use salvage value of that to the sewer fund to recoup the cost that they would get uh, in the fund from, say, take it to gov deals or sell it, you know, whatever, however appropriate processes we should. So um, we've, we've tried to be very strategic in the way we've done this. Uh, as JR pointed out, uh, that we had a $1.5 million stormwater improvements project. That's where we're getting some of these funds that were. Uh, uh, some of the projects that uh, either come in under budget or uh, won't be necessarily needed. Uh, so we're looking at some of the funding from that, uh, as well as uh, debt service uh, from uh, that will be budgeted for in next year's or this upcoming budget season uh, without having to raise our stormwater utility fee. So uh, that way they get a new piece of stormwater equipment and they could utilize it at their convenience uh, whenever they need it. So Yes and no, I guess, is the answer to the question. Uh, yes, you could do that, but at some point or another, you're going to have to reimburse the sewer fund for the existing one that would be handed down technically. And did we reimburse for the, first, the one we have now? We had a, um, if I recall correctly, Jordan, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, did, we had a back truck in Public Works, um, didn't we? And we utilized it to some extent, but ultimately the one in your water and sewer was maybe a better condition. I, I can't remember the full, uh, it's, it's been a while, I'm sorry. It's been, okay. uh, how many years is that? Six years now? <laughs> if I'm not terribly mistaken, the one that currently is used by the stormwater division was originally pub purchased by Public Works as a general fund purchase. It never ran from, okay. it, was, it was never a handy down from the, uh, uh, the, sewer, the sewer department to the, uh, the public works part uh, the best I understand it all predates me so the, the truck yeah. the truck they have now is quite old it, it's in excess of 15 or 20 yeah it was it was purchased it's, it's an old truck and it was purchased well before I got here too but uh, but ultimately public works was using it for this and whenever we pulled out uh, the usage of this truck because it's specifically for stormwater related events because you can't intermingle uh, treated sewage with stormwater uh, and using back trucks for that. Otherwise, we've got to discharge everything that we do into the sewer system, which ultimately costs money. Um, so we have to keep them separate. Mayor, if there's no further questions, I'll let you make a motion. We adopt the budget ordinance and then for FY17 18 operating budget. Second. Okay. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call, starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderman Harris? Yes. Alderman Beagle? Yes. Okay, at this time we're going to go to appointments, starting with Alderman Bingham. I have none. No. Nope. Alderman Harris? Alderman Bess? No. Alderman Kinsey? Might at this time, sir. Alderman Bess? Yes, I have one um, appointment to the Farmers Museum Board. Um, Ms. Nancy Mansfield contacted me and said that Mr. Henry uh, Watson, a retired um, fire inspector from the city of New Bern, was eager to take that position. So I would like for the board to um, let's add on Mr. Henry Watson to our fire with, with With glee, I <laughs> second that <laughs> and excitement. He will be awesome there. Okay, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Any other appointments tonight? Alderman Odom? None tonight, sir. Uh, number 21, attorney's report. Nothing to report tonight, Mayor. Uh, number 22, city manager's report. I have nothing to report, sir. Uh, number 23, new business, starting with Alderman Odom. Nothing tonight, sir. Uh, Alderman Bess? Nothing. Alderman Kinsey? No, sir. Alderman Astor? Yes. <laughs> um, 
Mr. Stevens, I apologize for not giving you a heads up on this, but is there any way possible you can give us an update on the airport road? Um, I know there was an engineering issue going on or something. Could you give us an update, please? If you, if you don't mind, I would love to defer that to uh, Mr. Montaigne. I'm sure he probably has a lot more detail than I do. So uh, if I'll ask no Matt problem. to come up, please. I'd love to give you an update, and I could probably give you a little better one if it was uh, next week, but I'll give you what I've got at this point. We did the uh, RFQ several months ago. We, with the RFQ rating process, we uh, selected an engineer out of Raleigh. Uh, we have gone back and forth with that engineer several times on the pricing and negotiations of the pricing and the scope of the work doing that. Uh, the latest on that is we met with them, myself and our street engineer, met with them Thursday last week, I believe it was, uh, making sure everybody knew the scope, revising the scope of the project. And the goal is for him to come back to us sometime this week with a, a final number. <clears throat> at, at, I'm pretty confident at that point we'll, uh, we'll make that decision to move forward with him at that point or to move down the line to the next engineer in line. Um, just, I, I know everybody's asking or wanting to know when's it going to be done, when's it going to be paved. At this point, I think the best, the best guess is, is probably 12 months from now. Um, talking with the engineer, by the time we go through the full design and everything that needs to be done for this project, you're probably looking about this time next year um, or the fall of next year before we actually get out there and start doing the construction. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir. Also, um, just wanted to brag a little bit about some of our employees. Uh, about two weeks ago, a sailboat on a very windy and cold day capsized at the mouth of Northwest Creek and it put four people in the water. Um, the fire department was dispatched with their their boat and when they arrived three of them were already uh, had been picked up from, by Good Samaritans but the fire department did locate the fourth victim, um, got him out of the water and treated him for hypothermia and transported them to the uh, the dock for a waiting ambulance and the good thing about it is is that the um, the person that they pulled out of the water actually visited the fire department the other day and thanked the firemen that were on duty for it. So job well done Chief Boyd. I appreciate it. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you Mr. Mayor. So um, April is deemed National Minority Health Month and so on April 28th at the Omega Center, they have went through, going through the process of um, redeveloping it and you know doing the inside and everything. I'm having a health fair um, on April 28th from 12 to 3 at the Omega Center, and I've been able to um, partner with um, the health department, Trillium, a lot of other individuals. They'll come out and do um, HIV, Hep C tests, blood pressures. They're going to do um, medication checks. They'll do diabetes. We'll have Zumba. We're going to have music. We're going to have food, healthy food, um, and a lot more things. So I hope everyone comes out um, and you know enjoys the event. And that's going to be April 28th from 12 to 3. That's a Saturday at the Omega Center on Cedar Street. That's it. Okay. A quick thing, um, shout out too to um, Public Works. Um, I've gotten several calls on how nice Queen Street is now, so thank you. Uh, Queen Street is much nicer to ride down, so you did a great job on the paving there. I want to thank you, and um, thank you to Brenda and City Manager. We got the Disability Committee together. We've already had a meeting on Monday, and um, it was a good meeting with some steps to move forward, so we're going to meet again in June and, and try to find some more ways to make us be, in, be compliant. And one of the studies we're going to have to do is this building and making sure we have a plan in place. So thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, do we need a closed session tonight? No, sir. Uh -huh. Yes. Do we do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need two. We need one for uh, potential economic development and two for potential land acquisition. Sorry. Okay, uh, 143, 318, 11, A3, um, A5, and A6. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed, same.